Hello, Nanagir. Oh, welcome back to Path of Exile. It is that time again. Time to run the Labyrinth. Running it on normal difficulty. And because I've already played quite some content, I'm level 40. This is a level 33 area. So that means I might actually have a chance at surviving this. My uh, life is a little bit on the low end. It's on only 1168. But I figured that with a fairly high chance to block 42% plus a fairly good armor um, and just maxed out resistances in general, I should have a pretty good chance. On top of that, I got a decent life regen and I have a lot of life leech. And because my damage is pretty high, um, 2000 DPS with my dominating blow AOE. Inferno blow, single target, 3200 DPS. This is a normal character, right? Normal difficulty character. Face breakers, it really does make things quite nice. So, I'm hoping that the uh, about 2% leech I do, I'm hoping that that is gonna help me stay alive on top of the regen and decent evasion. 37% chance to evade attacks. Basically, there's a lot of layers at work to keep me alive. So the size of my health pool, hopefully I can work around it. Let's see if we can uh, efficiently navigate through the labyrinth today. Guys, stop exploding. Yes, thank you. Also, someone killed my golem. Also, very nice that if you use a shield charge, you are technically pretty invincible. There's a supply, ca a supply cache there, hidden behind a lever. It's a locked door. Assuming this might be where a hidden lever comes into play or maybe we just have to go to the side here yes ow ah we walk to the back what was the back door that opens up the door okay and yeah, that's too big to pick up So I've changed my uh, my item loot filter a little bit. In a, uh, it's still a bit experimental. Just just trying to see if it works for me or not. And the biggest change there is that it's only showing items now that are level relevant. So as soon as a an item is more than five levels or no more than ten levels over where it drops, it just stops showing. So this way, if you see a an item drop, if you see it, it, it should be reasonably relevant. For example, this Ritual Scepter, it requires level 28 to equip, so that means it starts dropping from level 28. And because this is level 34 item, that is relevant, because it's within that 10 levels. So I hope that way, and I'm also applying it to, to blues and to rares. So that way I should only see items that are strictly relevant. So it's now oh, if you see a rare drop, you don't have the question like, is this going to be useful to equip or not? It just is. And especially now that I'm later in the league and no, I've got a lot of currency. That that's just very useful. Because you don't really care too much about picking items for uh, selling anymore. At least it's not like all the items there there's more items that you don't pick up than those that you do pick up so in that case only showing the relevant rares is actually fairly useful i still got some extra options in my filter of course to uh, show i think all the items until level 30 um, or at least all the blues until level 30 and all the white items until like level 10. just so if i start a new character then all the items that drop will show and then after that it's only going to be the blues and then it's only going to be the rares and all the items with like the maximum sockets for that level will still show so there's a silver chest over there ow 
Okay, so if you charge with those razor blades, they will actually stop you. Where there's a silver king, there must be a silver dwarf. That was a bit painful. So these ones you can't just charge through, you just wanna uh, teleport through. That works, flame dash. And of course, the teleport has a bit of a casting timer. So you might actually end up getting hit by the soul blades anyway. And this is pretty much a dead end. Oh, we got the key. That's that that's good. Now I just want to get on in the level. So yeah, item filter. It's uh still a work in progress. And nope, if you like the look of it um, you are always free to use my item filter it's always linked in the description below this video with a link to the, the most current one and if i'm really experimenting with stuff then it might take a couple of episodes before i'm happy with it and then i'll update my filter but you can always find it Also, one of the uh, changes I made is to always show the small items, the, like the one-handed items that can only have up to three sockets. If they have three sockets, just show them, rather than showing all items with three sockets or things like that. So, it's slightly better in that regard. And it now also accounts for shields that can only run up to three sockets. Roomba party. Very curious, just curious to see if Grinding Gear Games is going to make uh, a change to how this entire trial thing works. Because there's, there's been quite some complaints in, in the community. At least some of the, the more prominent streamers um, have been complaining about it. And those, of course, are the people that play the game basically as their job. <laughs> you know, 40 hours a week plus streaming so they, they play the game a lot and they are really down about the labyrinth the trials and things like that i wonder if there's gonna be a change based on that uh, personally i wouldn't mind it i thought the the labyrinth was a, a nice uh, a neat thing the first time i went through was still pretty okay the second time but by now i think it's just too long And that might be a bias I've developed based on just how I play. Um, you now with my play, uh, let's play being uh, 20, 25 minutes, 30 at most. So then having a bit of content in there, that's always going to be an hour if you do it when you are actually on the level. And that, that's rather annoying. I mean, there are people who race it who can do it way faster and once you know the layout of course you can do it faster as well and i actually played with a merciless capable character in the cruel labyrinth just doing it a couple times to enchant my uh, my gloves and my boots and it's 15 minutes per run because you're just ignoring most of it actually but i don't know i feel no, there, there's something has failed in the game design if a lot of people are actively trying to skip certain bits of content. Then there's something wrong with that content. Then no, either it's too long or it's not rewarding enough or... Yeah. I wonder if, if things are going to change with the, the 2.3 patch uh, after the Prince League. Or if... No, this is gonna remain working the way it does. So I wouldn't mind having it just be shorter. So rather than an area that if you play it through like regular content, that will take about an hour. Um, no, aiming it more towards uh, the, the, the 
20 to 30 minute range. So cutting it down in half. I mean, the, the three stage fights are a pretty nice idea, I think. And Isara fight, of course, it's... There's a whole bunch of RNG. And currently, if you're committing a whole hour to actually getting there, and then discovering that the map, the, the final boss layout is just impossible to fight on. Like spikes everywhere with, with slow darts and, and, and Roombas and whatever. So there's no room to maneuver. And so you're just having to tank all his blows without any room for maneuvering. No, it, it, it's not like you can then re-roll the map and say like, yo, maybe we do want to do something else. And that's how you end up ripping characters, uh, of course. If you commit to fights that you don't really want to commit fight to, but you've already invested too much. Probably a little bit of a sunk cost fallacy there, but... Yeah, and the, I think the, the, the challenge level of the Izaro fight it, it feels a bit off to me, especially with the, the trials beforehand. If you face the, the first uh, rounds of trials, um, you encounter them three times, and the first two times you get an extra mechanic. And if you fail to face it, then the next. So basically, if you are not strong enough to defeat him the first time through, then it's even harder the second time through. Because you get. The, the, the next encounter mechanic plus the one that you failed to make which I guess it's it's interesting but on the other hand from a, a difficulty perspective if you know you're not strong enough to make it the first time through then you're not gonna make it the second time through either so you know if you fail to defeat Izaro's elemental totem bonus for example because I don't know you don't have the single target damage or your timing was just a little bit off or oh, something. Then in the next fight, having it stacked on top, it's no, it's gonna make it so that as a, actually, I probably wanna have a look at these. As a experienced player, you intentionally have to play less than your best in order to fail it because you could uh, defeat the challenge, but then of course you defeat it in the earlier stages, so you don't get keys later on. And as a uh, well, less well-equipped player, or just as a player that is uh, not as good or not as experienced, you're gonna fail it because you just don't have the the ability to do it at that point. And then it's just going to be even harder in subsequent fights. So that, that's basically the game telling you, like, you know, buzz off. But if you want your Ascendancy class... Is there uh, something here? This is a... Ah, where the golden key is. Okay. So I'm not, not, not entirely sure, because it's, it's a bit of content that basically tells people to like yeah you know if you're not gonna be able to make it then it's just gonna be tougher for you so we really want to kill your character or you have to bail out but that also means you now the placement of it as a level 33 area in act 3 nope I'm already playing it just before I do Malakai uh, just because you got more more levels more uh Skill points from the quests, better gear. I mean, there's a level 40 character uh, with, with access to act for, some Act 4 gear. You are going to be better equipped to deal with those challenges. Oh, God, stand still. Stupid ghost. Yes, I got you. So I don't think I wanted that. Colossal mana. Ooh, 16%. Gem cutters strongbox. Do I have the currency for that? Oh, random rarity. Maybe it turns rare. It uh, just summons skeletons. Okay, bring on the skeletons. I want more minions. I could always use more minions. Ta-da!
I think now we have a situation where some uh, people will just ignore the labyrinth and the ascendancy and, and things like that until no, they have reached the maps and then, then they'll just do the normal and cruel. Let's see, there's gonna be a shrine down there, is there? Supply cache. Okay. You know what? I um, don't feel like bothering with puzzles right now. So the easiest way to do the, the the labyrinth is to just wait until you have like a level 60 or 70 character and then go back. Because then you'll have a ton of life and things are gonna be good. But right now, Oh, Izaro is tougher than Malakai, especially if you fail the the first two trials and he's buffed up the bazoo. I believe in traveling light. Which is rather punishing. So why is this room here? It's just a dead end, okay. But that's one of the things that I occasionally come back to to uh, get annoyed about is difficulty curves and breaking the expectations of, of players. Expectation is that if you have a, a boss like Izaro that is technically located before uh, Dominus. No, technically. Uh, Scepter of God. Oh, actually, after Dominus. So, Scepter of God is level 33. So, Domin and this is level 30. Uh, this is level 32, and this is level 33 area. So that means Dominus is going to be. Technically, you want to run this guy uh, Zaro after Dominus. Also, we lost our column. But in terms of difficulty. Izaro is like 10 times more difficult than Dominus. If you face roll Dominus, Izaro is still going to be able to kill you as if you were made of paper. That's because he just has insane one-hit attacks or just change of attacks. And it's... I know, it, it, it feels unbalanced. As I said, I'm uh, pretty, fairly confident I'm going to be able to... I, mean, I, I just defeated uh, Kalm and the Resso without actually breaking a sweat. Got a feeling that Malakai is going to be nope, similarly doable. I'm, I'm ready to face that content. Let's see, came in there. Let's check if the thing is there. Yes. Go. Is the most liberating of and then Izaro is like, yeah, you know, yeah, just just wait a lot more time. So in terms of difficulty, I think they should either tone them down or put them somewhere else, but at least make the the, the progression better. Let's see, put all the currency we have in here, and then everything else just goes into the sorting bin as usual. We have a silver key to spare. Um, okay, so this is going to be a fight where we will be using the infernal blow mostly. I'm actually just going to shift him on my bar so it's just easier to left click him and see what this is going to throw at us. So 20 minutes in. Must be First encounter. Ah. Golems. Kill the golems before he can absorb them. Well, I actually have pretty decent firm single target attacks. I think I got this. Also, yeah, I need to deal with this before he slopes them up. Good. Killed him. So if you have an AOE build, then, almost by definition, this is just going to be you nearly impossible. The last emperor is always the worst emperor. But it's also one of the main reasons why I actually have Infernal Blow as a single target skill now, rather than as uh, an AoE. Just to deal with single targets better. Oh, 
maybe that's also a different way to you know, play the game. Let's see, so you are here. Let's see where we end up. Massive shrine, that's good. More AB. So we can capture even more enemies at the same time. Make him join our band. So, yeah, the previous fight was not really challenging. Which is a good thing, I suppose. And again, again, it's the first encounters are usually pretty doable. It's the final encounter where he can both be double buffed. Ow. And... Let's see, Ice Nova, extra stuff. You join. Okay, and then we put this back on. Lots of currency. I approve of it. Okay, I think I picked up an item that's a bit too large to pick up. And the cruel encounter in mean, on normal, they don't Zaro down by 20%, uh, both damage and his life, I think. So the encounter itself is easier to do. But on cruel, he gets the unmodified version, and there. He, he's tough. And it's also uh, tough in a way that's hard to prepare for. That, that's one of the things that's early on in the game. Um, talking about close beta or no, not too long it's after close beta. It's the, the 1.0 version of the game. Encounters like Dominus. Um, he was tough. And if you ruffle stomped the entire game, then the Dominus encounter could still just completely massacre you. And that, that's how Izaro currently feels. Just out of balance with the rest of the game. I think the, the, the game should do a decent job of preparing you for encounters. And if the, the difficulty spikes are too large, then I think that, that that's just a failure of, of game design. Because then the difficulty curve is just... There's something wrong with the difficulty curve if the game is not preparing you for tougher encounters. Ooh, five sockets loaded plates. And the good thing is, I know this is going to be a relevant item because I actually saw it. And I had also happened to. Oh, it's a ring of plate that I'm wearing. And uh, as I say, I mean, it, it used to be that bad for Path of Exile, and I think they've gotten a lot better at balancing the, the, the difficulty curve of the game. Um, it's just that, that the SRO fight now kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, but it's uh, probably also something that, that's difficult to get right. I think there's also, if you have an evasion based character for example, um, evasion energy shield, like a, a shadow. Supposedly they have a difficult time with it. I've heard some complaints about the specific hybrid armor combinations. I haven't actually experienced that myself yet, because I've mostly been playing armor-based characters uh, this league. Oh, so okay. Spiky things. But also knowing that there's just huge amounts of spike damage. It, it really does, no, it rewards you for playing with an armor-based build. And as a result, I have kind of been going for armor-based builds. And also, minions. Izaro does not have any summons that you can dominate or kill. Well, you have, to, there's the, the skeletons, but you can't dominate them. So, and I don't think they leave corpses. So I think as a summoner, you're 
kind of ghostly boned there. Because if you actually were boned, then you at least had bones to summon uh, zombies from. Because right now, all the encounters in the game leave corpses or minions in some form that you can charm. The exception being uh, Dresso, who does not summon anything. And Izaro, who summons the, the ghostly skeletons, which you cannot dominate. Um, but you can explode them. So if you have something that, that uses Infernal Blow, or if you use Abyssal Cry, or Detonate Dead. No, Detonate Dead needs corpses, so I think that doesn't work. But those things do leave you kind of wanting. On the one hand, you could say, well, you know, that there's some variety in content. It, it forces you to have a character that, that's able to deal with a variety of challenges. You know, having the, the boss that does a lot of fire damage, the boss that does a lot of cold damage, lightning damage, chaos damage, physical damage, the boss that's tanky against each of those damage types, the bosses that do melee damage, range damage, uh, the bosses that have lots of summons, the bosses that uh, are just a solo encounter, now, having a variety, it does force you to have a build that is more well-rounded. So if you come up with a build, then you have to ask yourself the question, okay, it's good that you are very good at dealing with groups, but how about single targets? How well do you do with it? Do you no, take a special skill for it or not? Let's see, so we key, we need to walk around. Uh, we just uh, go for it. So prior to the Izaro encounter being in the game, of course, Teresa was the only one you had to account for in terms of, well, there's no means available. So leeching life off of things is going to be harder. The refla refilling your flask is more difficult. Though I think if he's doing his power up routine, if you hit him, you actually gain flask charges off of him. So that's, I think, how they solved uh, that particular problem. And in terms of flask charges, uh, is our fight. You have the ghosts, you kill them, you gain flasks uh, charges. So you still have that. They solved that for you. Uh, also, dead end. Oh, wait, actually, we can go through. No, it's still a dead end. Also, you are not mine. So I'm wondering if, if Izaro needs to be toned I down for just a regular gameplay. Or, you know, if, if obtaining your ascendancy class is supposed to be a very difficult task and uh, that is supposed to fall outside of the scope and maybe you shouldn't expect to do it at uh, the level where it is. Ooh, blessing of the elements. You join the group. But still, it's something that yeah, takes time. And it is desirable to get yourself your ascendancy class. No, it unlocks things that you don't have, especially the four pointers. Current location, is that where we entered or is this the exit? I don't know. Let's double check. Where are we now? We went back. Okay. I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. It's only one other exit. Oh. Good. Then we'll just uh, go towards the book. Oh, tools like. Can't leave a skill gem behind. The warrior bled upon the Zaro's a poem. How Zaro's culturally responsible. So, yeah, rambling about Izaro, labyrinth, 
is and things like that. I'll probably keep doing that. Whenever I'm here, I always... I feel like, yeah, I don't really want to be here. Just, just, yeah, gotta slog through it. Uh, it explodes. Well, we can deal with that. Okay. Yo. The aquamarine flask. Command location. Yes, we found the exit for towards the aspirants trial. When the time comes to strike, an emperor strikes without hesitation. Good, good, good. To entertain doubt is to dance with death. Uh, and then everything else, of course, goes back into the sorting bin. Okay, okay. So, we uh, killed all the things because we actually have single target damage. And as a result, we don't have any power-ups. Let's see if we can manage that this time as well. Slowness lends strength to one's enemies. Statues, uh... This is the, the proper timing thing, isn't it? Yes. Death and loyalty. Oh, I'm doing insane damage. Okay. Wisdom is the offspring. So I should actually have done a tour to disable them, because they all got filled and then he won or something, or maybe I got him down to a low enough level. That's also the thing. You know, it takes a quite a bunch of trial and error before you figure out what the heck each challenge demands of you. Which I suppose is a good thing. No, you have to invest a little bit of time and effort into the game, get better at it. Upside is I'm gonna get extra keys even though I failed the trial and he's gonna be buffed so he's gonna be a more quote-unquote interesting challenge in the final fight Let's see, random curse Well, oh, maybe they should reverse the, the challenge actually so if you make a challenge, if you manage to defeat it, that means, of course, that you have a build that is powerful enough to actually defeat the challenge. So maybe that is when it carries over to the next fight as a permanent modifier and gives you a key as a result. And if you fail to defeat the challenge, then your build is not strong enough to deal with it. And as a result, you're not going to get it. And you're not going to get the, the key. That might be a, a better way to balance things, to you know, turn things on their on their head, so that the challenge itself adapts itself to how strong you are or how strong you you choose to be. So if you intentionally fail it, you're not gonna get the key, but you're also not gonna get the challenge. Rather than a current situation where if you intentionally fail it, you're actually gonna get a more challenging experience, and you're gonna get an extra key in the end if you do manage to make it. And of course there's still the, the thing of him doing like 1200 unmodified physical damage, which is just a ludicrous amount. Well, if you have an evasion based character then it's just a rip if he hits you. And if you then also are in a situation where there's lots of summons and there's no real clear path to get away, then you're just uh, screwed. Okay. 
So let's just ID this one. 4 to 10 physical damage. That's not quite bad. I've got better, but it's not quite bad. So let's look for the final Izaro. See if we can uh, manage to survive it while he's being buffed up by three elemental statues. Because that's the thing, right? I killed Izaro fast enough that... Because oh, I thought I had to get him down to one third rather than half. So just killed him too quickly. I could have just stopped attacking him and clicked all the shrines, but... Went too quickly. And now he's going to be a lot more powerful. Fun, fun, fun. Luckily, I'm fairly defensive. That's uh, a lesson I learned from the, the previous build of this character, of course. Time to crank. So we can just go through here. Probably another one here. Yep. Push. Excellent. Yeah, let's see another jeweler's strong box. Be a bunch of rings and such. Do I have something to boost it? Yep, that's nice nearby corpses. Yay, that's gonna be as well. Okay, you join the party. Last one, I think. I believe so. And of course, nothing. Russell dropped. Okay, let's hope for the best. A silver cash and an exit. Let's see which we find first. I think I'm uh, just, just reflecting a little bit more on the on the difficulty curve thing. Uh, that's going to be the, the, the theme of this episode, difficulty curve. <laughs> um, maps, of course, have a similar thing where balance is a bit interesting. You know, some, some map bosses are more difficult than others. And the map tiers only increase the, the levels. So 40 minutes till we get to the final Lizarro. This is gonna be a quick one. Quote unquote quick. Emperor must keep those promises. Um No bonuses? Oh. Okay. So I actually did manage to defeat him before the things. I don't know. I'd like to think I, I understand the game mechanics fairly decently. But these these trials they are you must navigate your Oh god. Oh fucking hell. Not this one again. 
This is the, the map that killed the previous inc incarnation of this build. But on the other hand, I do a boatload of damage here. So, yay! But this seems pretty weak. Before your emperor, clickety. Before the Very nice. Of I actually got currency out of this. Blah blah blah, worthy, blah blah blah. And rise nice thing is, Facebreakers can actually get uh, enchanted. Word of winter when hits. And the nice thing is that as of patch, uh, the most recent patch, the 222C patch. Uh, gladiator. Uh, yes. But, but. Hey, we get more block chance and more damage when we are not hit. Hey. Hey, and we are now a gladiator with the new icon and everything. We now have a 44% uh, chance to block stuff. So that's pretty good. So we are pretty tanky. Next up is going to be Malakai. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.